Dems lose in special election runoff as GOP candidates advance to general. This is GOP sweeps two top positions in special Texas 6th House election. I guess, yeah, top two, however you want to say it, two top, top two, whatever. However you want to say it, this is a uh, top stories report, but I don't know if we'll get to how many of the other stories we'll get here on the top stories report. But we're going to start with this and we'll see where it goes. This is from Red State. Democrats took a gut punch in a Texas special election last night. And this is an excerpt from Red State. You didn't hear much about it, but Texas's 6th Congressional District held a special election last night. What a, re- what a, what a surprise you didn't hear much about it. Believe you me, if, if the corpo state nationalist media had seen the Democrats win the top two positions, it would be blasted all over the interwebs. But as it was, because it didn't fit their narrative, then that's why you don't see it, obviously. District held the the, the sixth congressional district held a special election last night to fill recently passed Representative Ron White Wright's PC. Ron Wright, I didn't even know you were sick. Oh, that's terrible. Terrible. Let me check it out. Who who is Ron White? Representative Ron White. Republican Ron White. So there he is, Ron White. And how did he die? Let's see how he died. Oh hospitalization for COVID-19, but he also had cancer, so he had, uh, as you say, extenuating circumstances. There are several things to note here. This was only a Trump plus three district in 2020, and it's exactly the kind of suburban district that Democrats have been very bullish on making further gains in. Despite that, the Republicans not only took background, took background, but took back the entire battlefield, perhaps signaling a return to normal voting patterns in some of these places that were previously trending blue. Well, normal is relative, but okay, such as that is. So this is a story that is good news for the the resistance to, well, the resistance to the DNC, certainly. The question is, who are these people that have, have won these positions? And that's... That's another matter altogether, and I don't pretend to know exactly who these folks are and whether they fit into a parameter that would have the Republican Party itself actually start to stand defiantly and consistently across all spheres of of human beings, uh, such, uh, such as that is, on the Bill of Rights, on King Bill. I don't know the degree to which these human beings are going to be just like the Republicans that we have mostly see, which are the, the token resistance, the Washington generals team. So did we elect, uh, will, 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 well, there's only two people that, that, that could be chosen of those two. Did we, did we possibly allow for, let's just see, we got Susan Wright. I wonder if she's related to uh, uh, Ron Wright. Let's see, Susan Wright. Let's see, Susan Wright. Let's see if she's related to Ron Wright. I mean, it seems highly... Highly probable. Susan Wright for... Oh, she's the widow. Okay, so this is... (laughs) Wow, okay. So that's... She'll probably win that race. And not because of anything other than Susan Wright is... is, So so we basically have... This is not not necessarily a Bill of Rights candidate. If we're just going to select the widow, if we're going to follow the... This is basically the... It's, it's a vestige of, of royalty. It's this concept that individuals inherit the special privileges and powers of, of, of their family members, in this case, the wife of, of the deceased person. So this is a win, I guess, for the Republicans, but is it really? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything about Susan Wright, and if you know anything about it, you comment down below and let me know, but I'll just say that uh, I'm going to say that I'm a bit skeptical. This may be one of those victories that, well, I guess you could say it's, I don't even know. I don't know that it's better for us to have, we who resist, I'm not talking about, I'm not a, I'm not a member of the GOP, and I don't think I ever will be, uh, and many of our listeners and even some people who contribute to the Freedomist are members of the GOP, so I'm not, you know, that's fine, I don't have any issue with people that are members of the GOP, but... I am seriously doubtful that uh, that 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 this is going that, that well I, my my skepticism is 
maybe in some cases, in some instances, it's good for us to actually have the full version of the of the rabid anti-Americanism in its place in the form of any DNC candidate, almost any DNC candidate, maybe all, uh, rather than this soft anti-Americanism that you get largely from most GOP members. And, these, and by that, I mean most of these GOP members just are not committed to fully live out the Bill of Rights standards consistently in their lives and in in, in across the board in the market, both in terms of employer and, and client and uh, in the in the civic arena, they are very, very selective when it comes to appealing to the Bill of Rights. So I don't know. I don't know that it's not a bad thing for Democrats to win more elections in the hope of accelerating the need for humans to leave the the ultimate plantation which is a dependence on any system that does not, especially I'm appealing specifically to Christians, any system which does not in, in some way or form put Christ as the head, and I'm not necessarily talking about a theocracy, but if you have a whole people that are predominantly not even paying attention to the king, Christ is king, then you're going to have a an upside-down Christ culture and an upside-down Christ ways, and when you're dependent upon an upside-down Christ culture and upside-down Christ ways, well, it makes it very difficult for you to fully live out your faith. So I don't know how to read this. I guess I'll leave it at that, and you guys comment down below and let me know what you think. <laughs>